This is my latest Touch Develop um, video tutorial for Activity 4C in my Game Space Touch Develop curriculum. Um, in this one, I'm going to be creating the classic game Space Invaders, one of the first games I played back in the day in the arcades. Um, so let's start by going to touchdevelop.com and sign in with a Microsoft account. I'm going to use my secondary account. It helps if you remember your password. Okay, so we're going to create a classic <coughs> arcade game Space Invaders. Um, I've called mine Touch Invaders. Let's, so let's create a script. We're going to take a physics game starter and we're going to call it Touch Invaders, but you can call it whatever you want. I'm going to put a space in this because I've already got one called Touch Invaders. Um, and we want to add in the art first of all that we're going to use. So we're going to go down into art and we're going to add in a background picture. Um, Let's call it space background. And we'll search the available pictures online. And we'll take this one here, 800 by 480. Now you can choose a different one, but that one's the right size for Windows Phone, so it's quite useful to this one. And that's a nice kind of background picture that we can use. Um, let's also add some art for the tank. So we're going to click on to new art resource here, and we'll name it Player Tank. And let's search the online, and we'll look for tank. And there's a few to choose from there. I'll take this one here that was done well created by one of my students recently. So Invader Space Tank, let's take that one. Which is a kind of alien looking space based tank thing. Okay, so we'll use that. Um and now let's do some coding. So we'll go back to main um, and we'll make some changes. We're going to add in a line here to set the background wall. Uh, the background wall will appear when we display the high score table, so I do want to set that. Um, so we're going to set it to black. Um, and we're going to set the wall's foreground colour to white. So we're looking for set foreground, and we're going to hit backspace and take white. Um, and and that doesn't show there, but what does happen is at the end of the game when we show the high score table, it does it on the wall, not on the board. And that will make it black and white, which will be closer to the colours of the game. Um, we're creating a landscape board, which we're going to keep. In our game, we're not going to use gravity. Okay, so alien ships don't get affected by gravity, so we're evidently. So we're going to put it to zero gravity. Um, and let's add in a line here to post to the board. So we're going to say board, and we're going to set the background picture, and we're going to set it to the thing we just uploaded, which was the space background. And if we run that again now, we now have our picture in the game already. You can see how fast you can do things with Touch Develop. You can get things happening very quickly. I'm skipping out the comments that are in the curriculum, but you should add them in. Um, to add a comment, you use the comment box here. And you type in a comment to explain what's happening. So, for instance, one of the comments I've suggested you put is that create game sprites. So this next, this next piece of code is going to create the game sprites. Um, right, we're going to create a global variable. Now, remember the process. This is the bit that most people find tricky at first to touch the up. Click on variable. Um, uh, we're going to call it base. 
and that's a new feature that they just added you can now name it right away rather than having to do the right hand side and then go back and rename it that is actually very handy and then we're going to say board create picture and we're going to call it we're going to use the player tank that we just uploaded so we've made a sprite based on the player tank that we uploaded for the game board and now we click on this and promote to data we now have the game board and we have our space base that we're going to control next we're going to make it smaller because as you probably saw there it's far too big um, again when you're resizing sprites in touch develop you only really need to resize either the height or the width because resizing one resizes the other so I'm going to set the width to 100 which will proportionately resize the height as well there you go and we've got a smaller tank there that's the run button here I'm hitting by the way when you want to run the game um, let's give it some friction um, as you notice there I've not set friction for the board as such so we're going to set friction individually for different things which is to be fair realistic because different objects in the real world do have different levels of friction based on how they roll I guess and so we set friction to 0 0.05 and lastly we're going to make a variable which we're going to use to set the speed of the base so there and I like this feature that you can just put in the name right away base speed we're going to call that and on the right hand side I'm going to set it to 30 and again this is going to be global so we're going to click on it and promote to data which makes it global so we can access it throughout the rest of the game sorry turning page um, we're going to create a function um, what in touch develop is called an event um, to reset the game but I'm going to put it in here first so we want a variable for lives. Lives is obviously something that you have in most computer games, so we're going to give three lives. Again, you can change that if you like. And let's set that to global. Um, we're going to create a variable for score as well. And set that to zero. And promote to data. We're going to create a variable for wave. And we're going to start it on wave 1 and again promote that to data if you don't know what I mean by wave it's the the waves of aliens so if you clear one wave you get another wave so we're going to have variables for all those things um, and let's set the position of the base so that at the start of the game it starts in the same place so we're going to say base set position and we're going to set it to the board width divided by 2 which is basically means in the middle of the screen with, uh, horizontally and the position I'm going to set here is 370 which is near the bottom let's run that and see what happens so it's near the bottom now I'm leaving space for your finger to go on to move it and things like that so that's put it near the bottom um, I'm, in this game I'm going to give you the choice of um, using the accelerometer to control it or to use touch so I'm going to create a boolean variable for that that I'm going to call very simply tilt on and we can ask we can ask using the wall we can ask for a boolean response so I'm going to say wall ask boolean and in the title bit I'm going to delete that and I'm going to hit string and I'm going to put on tilt screen controls on which basically asks the users the user a question and in the subtitle we'll put in accelerometer if I can spell it and so that's a subtitle so we're asking about the question is whether you want the tilt screen controls on and that's related to the, t the accelerometer again that's going to be a global variable okay and if I run that you now get a question popping up so it's a good way to ask questions tilt screen controls on I'm going to say no and then it goes to the game um, and lastly we're going to now say 
very importantly, oh, my mistake. What 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 I actually want to do here is take this line here and cut it out of there and put it down at the bottom. Okay. Uh, there was a reason for that. I think it's to do with when we post the high score table at the end and then we restart start the game. It was important to post the board back to the wall again. Um, okay, so let's run that again. Just check it's working. And we're still working. Now, the things that we've just added there, live score wave, etc. are all things that we need to do um, at the start of every game. And we want in this game to give the facility to be able to... Um, to restart the game after you play the game. So I'm going to highlight using this control here on the right. I'm going to highlight these lines of code and I'm going to extract them into a method that I'm going to call reset game. So extract that. Now that still runs, so it's now into a separate action here. Sorry if I call it method or function, it's habit, but um, it's in a separate action here called reset game. All these things are here. So the live score wave, position of the base, are all going to be reset. And we're going to ask the question each time about the accelerometer. And we're going to repost the board to the wall. And if we run it again, it works just as before. Because that bit of code is getting called um, in main just the same way um, as if it was there. But we can then call it later on as well, which is handy. Let's go into the game loop now. Remember the game loop is a bit that repeats constantly. Um, so we're going to add code to allow you to move. Um, move your base. So we're going to say if the board is touched. So the player has touched the board. And if they have touched the board, what we want to say is if the board touch current on the X which is the uh, horizontal left and right is less than sorry if it if it's less than the x position of the base okay so if the if you basically put your finger to the left of where the base is on the screen what we're going to do is say base set speed on the x which is left and right, and we're going to set the speed to that. So we're going to actually say, we're going to set the speed of the base to the current speed, first of all. Because right, we're going to have acceleration and that kind of thing. So we're first of all going to say, set the speed to the speed. Basically, so keep it the same, but minus this base speed value. So we're basically going to start subtracting the base speed value, which I think was 10 or 20 earlier on from whatever the current speed is, which will basically start to move it to the left. Um, and in the else part, we're going to say, because if you haven't hit to the left, you've hit to the right. So we're going to move it to the right. So we're going to say the same thing. And I would actually copy the line above for this. So I would go to that, copy it, and just paste it in. Because the only thing that's changing here is that instead of adding the base speed, subtracting the base speed, we're adding the base speed. OK, and let's run that and see what happens. So no, we're going to use the screen. And if you see, by I can simulate touching the screen by using the mouse. And if I touch to the side of it, it moves towards where I'm touching. And that's quite a good way to control it. Let's add the tilt controls as well. So we're going to say if data tilt on. Now you could put the bit above inside the else here so that those controls only act only come into effect um you know when the tilt controls are not on i think the way i left it originally was that the on screen controls always work but it might actually be better to choose to make it only work one way or the other you certainly don't want the tilt controls on and the screen at the same time if you're um trying to use the on screen because the tilt will kind of override so if we've decided to use tilt, what we're going to say is we're going to make a variable, a temporary variable. It's just going to be local. We're going to call it tilt. And into that variable, we're going to use senses. Now, senses basically reads things like the accelerometer. Um, and that's what we're going to read. We're going to read the quick accelerometer value. 
and we're going to scale it up by 100 to give us a good value which is basically multiplying it by 100 um, and then we're going to apply that so in the next line what we're going to say is base set speed x very like what we did above and again we're going to set it to the current base speed x and then we're going to add on to that the tilt x value which is basically the amount that the phone or the tablet has been tilted left and right um, it will go negative if you're going to the left so that will basically now allow me to simulate so if I say accelerometer on and I just I'm not t I'm not clicking the mouse this time I'm just moving my mouse left and right which simulates the idea of tilting the screen I'm not clicking and as you see it moves now based on that as well having thought about it I do think it's probably an idea to take this part of code here and cut it and put it into the else um, so that it only works one way or the other so if I run it now and I say do you want to use accelerometer and we say no and I move the mouse it doesn't work but if I touch it works if I go back and run that again and I say on tilt control on yes it now works like that but clicking doesn't do anything um, ok so that's probably a better way to do it you could even if you like take these lines of code in here and here and put them into separate actions basically saying you know move the base using accelerometer move the base using touch that kind of thing um, I'll leave that up to you um, we want to stop the base going out the screen I don't know if you saw the accelerometer it was flying out the screen though so if I did that you see it's kind of disappearing out the screen we want to stop that so let's let's put some limits on um, you could do it with boundaries but um, there was a reason I don't do the boundaries in this game because it messes with the space invaders when they bounce off the sides which I'm going to do with code but you probably could get around that and you probably could do it with, with that so let's say if the base on the x x is less than the base width I'll explain why I'm doing that in a second. Divided by two, right? You could just say if the best the the position of the base and the x is less than zero. However, the position of the base is the center point of the base of the sprite. Um, so by doing that, it would go half out. So basically, we're taking the position that we're checking on the left hand side in a bit. Um, I'll probably actually show you what what happens when I don't do it that way, so you get the idea. Okay, so what we're going to say here is base set the speed in the x and what we're going to set it to is math absolute to make it positive and it's the absolute value of the existing base speed on the x divided by 2 so we're just setting the speed to be half of what it was so it doesn't bounce back too much um, and we're subtracting and we're making it positive because it will be going negative at this point so if I run that now and about off the left hand side it doesn't work failure <laughs> right that failed because it was inside the else there do you see that right if you look in how that is lined up I'm inside that else right so take that out there cut it click down here and make sure you use this move left button right and then paste it Right, because I don't want to be inside that else or the if, which is where my mistake came from there. Um, and let's run that now. And we'll see, yes. Right, and now I'm sticking against the wall. Not at that side, because I've not done that side, but I'm sticking hard against that wall. I can't get out no matter how hard I try. Right, that's good. If I had put that to zero, by the way, just to show you, instead of the half of the base width, this is what would have happened. Just to demonstrate. Right, you see what I'm saying? The point, the position of it is halfway, so I need to bring this line in to here so that it doesn't go half out. So can we undo and run that and see yes. There we go. Right, and we're going to do a very similar line to check the other side. So in fact I'm going to copy and paste 
remember copy and paste as a programmer's friend right um, let's take that one out and we'll say greater than and we're going to use the board width so the width of the board so board width and minus to bring the line in again minus half the base width and when that happens we again set it to be this half of the existing speed we make it positive but then we make it negative right to force it to be negative so now we have two ifs that will check for both sides okay so we're sticking at that side we're sticking at that side there we go we can't get out either way right and that's better success again there's no harm in taking these bit and putting them into co separate bits here if it helps you um for instance if i highlight that bit i could and i'm probably going to do this actually probably a good idea um mark that bit and we'll extract that to move base right and you see now if I go there I've got a separate bit from moving the base if I go back to being game loop I can highlight this and I can extract it to check limits for base I'll extract that okay and that does make the code look neater okay so we've got move base here we've got check the limits for the base it, it does make it look neater and it's probably a good idea. Um, right, n next thing we want to do is add aliens. So we've got a base, let's add something to shoot at. So let's go back into here. Um, I'll probably put reset game at the last part of main, so I'm going to add it above. Um, so let's create a variable. Let's call it aliens. Um, and it's going to be sprites, but it's going to be a sprite set because we get multiple aliens. So we're going to say board and create sprite set. It's going to say shout me if you see it there, but that would be hard. Right, so and we're going to make it global. So we've got aliens board create the sprite set. Um, let's add some art for that. Um, so have a we'll call this alien and we will search for aliens and choose a suitable alien. I like this one. This again was one of my students. His name's actually Kevin McDowell. Should give him credit. So I'm going to take his alien spaceship there which is quite nice. I like the scary eye. Um, okay we're going to add an action now to allow us to add the space invaders in. So let's go to add new action, click on where it says go and rename it to add invaders. We're going to add some input parameters at the same time, we need quite a lot for this. We've actually got 11 parameters. The reason we're doing it with parameters is then you could lift this add invaders routine and use it in different games. You could even make it into a library, so we're going to make it as encapsulate it as possible so nothing everything's going to be passed in that we need to use so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven different parameters we're going to name them all so i'm going to click on the first one and this is going to be i'm going to call it first x and that's going to be the x coordinate of the first invader and then first y is going to be the y coordinate of the first in invader that we're going to pass in the number of rows we're going to pass in the number of columns. Uh, we're going to pass in a spacing value for the x-axis to tell it how much to space them out um, horizontally. We're going to pass in a y spacing to tell them how much to space it out on the y. Um, we're going to add in the speed for the aliens so we can set their initial speed and pass that in. We're going to make this one a sprite set. I'm going to type that into save. We're looking for it. Sprite set. So we're going to make that one a sprite set, and we'll call it sprite set. Um, we're going to pass in a picture. So look for picture, and we'll call that alien picture. 
um, and we're going to pass in a game board so that we can pass in the board we'll use it and again this is so that it can be taken and used in any game you create with any different game board and the last bit is going to be passing the width of the alien which we're going to use to set the size of the alien so everything that we need is basically getting passed in and then what we're going to do is basically we're going to load the picture into the sprite set that we declared in the main and we're going to set the positions of them first of all though what we want to do is say sprite set and clear it to make sure there's no sprites in the, the sprite set then we're going to use four loops okay and the four loops are going to loop up from zero up to the number of rows and we're going to have another for loop inside it which is going to loop up to the number of columns and I saw it there and missed it, there we go, columns so this is a for loop inside a for loop which means that this for loop will get repeated the amount of times that the will be called again and again depending on how many rows there are so if there's four rows this for loop will get repeated four times so if there's four rows and ten columns the code inside this bit will get repeated forty times um, and we create 40 aliens so we're going to create a variable and we're going to call this one alien sprite um, and into alien sprite we're going to add a uh, picture so we're going to say board create picture and the picture that we're going to pass in is the alien picture which I think it actually had selected for me and I took it out it's alien picture which is the one that we're passing in um, we're also going to set the size of the alien, so alien sprite set width and we're going to set it to the variable that we are passing called alien width um, we're also going to set the speed so look for set speed to x and we're going to pass into that the alien, the sorry, the alien speed, obviously. Um, and that's just in the x axis, right? We're also going to pass in the position. So this is based on things, though. So the alien sprite. Uh, I'm going to set the x just to. I could set the x and the y in the one line but this will break it up a bit so set x and we're going to start by setting it at the first x position but we're going to add on to that the j which is the counter for the columns multiplied by and in brackets again the alien sprite width right, and this is a good way to do it because if you change the width it will automatically change plus the x spacing and we need to close the bracket and close the bracket okay so it basically it starts it at the position that we set for first x and adds on to the, the column number times the width of each sprite plus a bit of space so if the alien sprite was 80 pixels wide and the width was 20 they would be spaced out to um, 100, 200, 300, 400 so, um, and that would be added on to whatever initial position we give here like the first one would be actually at 0, 100, 200, 300 so if we started at say 50 they would be at 150, 250 so on um, and we'll do the same for the other way so alien sprite and set the y um, based on the same idea so first y plus bracket alien sprite height plus the y spacing so the same idea down the way based on the row numbers and close back close back and uh, one bracket too many that time I think or not I forgot to do. Uh, I forgot to see I in there, didn't I? So I times. Okay, 
so that two very similar lines. And then finally, we've created this uh, temporary alien sprite inside the for loop. Finally, what we do is we want to add that to the sprite set. So, sprite set, and we want to add the alien sprite. And that's that routine done. Mm. And then we need to call that. So that would do nothing if we didn't call it. So if we go back into reset game, and before we post it to the wall, what we're going to say is we're going to use the code. We're going to select add invaders, and we're going to set all these. So we're going to say start the first one at 50 on the X by 50 on the Y. We're going to have four uh, rows, and we're going to have ten columns of aliens. You see it tells you down here what we're doing. So we're on X space and we're going to space them out with at least 5 pixels. We're going to space it the Y by 5 pixels as well. Um, the alien speed we're going to set to 50. And it needs the picture. We're passing it. It's already selected the correct sprite set because it's the only one we've got. It's selected the correct, the correct board. We need a picture. We are going to pass in the alien picture. And lastly, for the, um, we're going to pass in 40, which is, if we check back, the last one was the alien width. Right, so that's just setting the size. Okay, let's run that and see. And there we go, we have aliens, and they are even moving because we set the initial speed. But as you watch, they will disappear out the side. Now we're going to get another action again, this is quite a big action, it's to move the aliens, so we're going to go into add action and we're going to call this one move aliens. We do have a few parameters to pass in, so click on the name of the action and we're going to add four parameters. The first one's going to be a sprite set, so look for sprite set, if you're using a keyboard it's quicker to type it in to be honest, right, and we'll call that Right, set. Um, we're going to pass in a variable to hold the number of pixels to move down. Probably should have thought of a short name for that. Um, and we're going to pass in a left limit and a right limit. Um, so that will be the sides where they're going to hit. Um, let's create a variable which we're gonna I'm gonna call hit sides and then we're gonna default that to zero. It's gonna be numeric. Um and that's gonna indicate to me if it's hit the left or the right side. Um I'm gonna do a for each loop, which will loop round everything in a sprite set. So the sprite set we're gonna loop round will be the sprite set that we're passing in that I called sprite set. Um if I can just hit on sprite a minute and then rename that so I think I'm going to call that alien instead of calling it sprite so we'll rename that to, to alien okay and then what we're going to say is if the alien so alien is a temporary copy basically or pointer if you like to each sprite in the sprite set so you can alter it by doing this inside the for each whatever I do to this one is going to be affecting all the sprites. So if the alien x position is less than the left limit that we pass in plus the width of the alien divided by 2 and again it's divided by 2 so that we can go from the center point of the alien um, to the right hand side of the alien or sorry in this case the yeah the right hand the left hand side of the alien? No talking rubbish. We are basically moving the position of the alien, the position of the line that we check to the right. I'll demonstrate this in the game later. If we had just done the left limit, the alien would... Uh, I'm going to edit this bit out later. Okay, to explain this line again, we could just say if alien x is less than the left limit, but that would mean that it would be checking the center point of the alien, so we're moving the line that we're checking into the right a bit so that the left hand side of the alien does in fact hit the left limit which is what we want and when we do that we're going to set this hit sides variable to 1 and it will become apparent later on 
why I'm indeed setting it to one. Um, okay, and then we're going to do another if, and we're going to say if alien x is greater than the right limit minus the alien width divided by 2. So the same idea for checking the other side. And then hit sides, we're going to set to a minus 1 this time. Okay, so if once this for each loop is finished, if either if hit sides becomes either 1 or minus 1, we know that we've hit one of the sides. And there is a reason why I'm saying minus 1, which will become apparent in a minute. Use the move left one now and move in because we don't want to be inside. It's important you're not inside the for each for this last bit. And then we're going to say if hit sides compare that's a not not equal to not equal to zero. And then if it's basically not equal to zero, it means we hit one of the sides. And if it's hit one of the sides, we do a for each. And we're going to go around the sprite set again. And let's rename that. So enter the select the sprite that is defaulted that to that variable name to and rename it. And we'll call it Alien 2 this time. Probably could have just called it Alien again. Right, and then what we're going to say is Alien 2. We're going to set the Y to Alien 2's existing Y position. Try that again. Alien 2, the Y. And add on to that the number of pixels to move down. Or jump down as I've said there. Right, add another one and we're going to say alien 2 and we're going to set this x speed to the hit sides and this is where this hit side comes in multiplied by the absolute value of the existing speed. All right, so we're getting the whatever speed it's moving, let's say it's moving 10 or minus 10, we're going to make that positive. So we're going to say alien 2 and we're looking for the x speed that I've created, speed x. Okay, so what that does, if, if it was moving at 10 for instance, and it hit the right hand side, hit sides is minus 1, minus 1 times 10 would be minus 10. If it's going to the left, it would be say it was moving at minus 10. If it hits the left hand side, we're absolutely that value to 10, then we're multiplying with hit sides which is 1, and it becomes 10. Right, so that's why I did 1 and minus 1, so I could use it here. And that's that method complete. We now just have to call it. So let's go back into the game loop. Right, so let's go back in here and we're going to say code move aliens. Um, we're, yeah, we're going to move the alien one. Let's guess that right. We're going to jump down 5 pixels when it hits the side. We are going to set the left limit as 0. And I'm going to set the right limit as the board width and let's run that and let's hopefully check if it hits the right hand side and they all move down and then they go the other way that's what we want okay and that will keep happening as they go Okay, we need to add a sprite set now for shields, so we're going to go up to into the main method and we're going to say a variable and we're going to call it shields. And just like the line above, we're going to say board and we're going to create a sprite set for the shields and again set this one to global. Next we're going to add in a method to add some shields. So if you go down to the bottom of code and click on add new action to protect your base from the alien invasion. Um, I'm going to do a similar method to the one that we did for adding the aliens. It's going to be slightly different though so I can't reuse the first one totally so I'm going to make a new one. And we're going to pass in a bunch of parameters again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 10 parameters this time, so 1, 2, 3, 4. So hit add input parameter 10 times, and we're going to call the first one first x, and then 
first. Why? Uh, shield width and shield height. Now I'm not going to use a picture this time, I'm just going to use shapes. So I'm going to set the, set the width and the height of them this time. Which you can do when you're using shapes rather than um, sprites. We're going to say number of columns, number of that. We're going to pass in a sprite set. Um, we're going to pass in the spacing for the x axis, axis, and the spacing for the y axis. And we are going to pass in the game board. Okay, just to keep consistency with the notes, I'm going to call it sprite set there. Right, so we're going to pass all those things in. First thing we're going to do is say sprite set, and we're going to clear the existing sprite set. Then we're going to do some for loops, just like we did before. So we're for, and we're going to say rows. And a second four. That says columns. What's well, there anyway? Now it's done the ing different to the way it is in the notes, so just watch out for that. I think you can rename them, but it doesn't seem to be like me doing that today. So we're going to create a temporary um, sprite variable. So we're just going to call it sprite. And it's going to be using the game board, and we are going to create a rectangle. So this is like a filled in rectangular shape. And we're going to set it using the variables that are passing in. So it's going to be a shield width and shield height. And we're going to set the position of this new sprite to. But look, this is a bit just like what we what we did for the alien. So first x plus, and because my variables are mixed up from what they are in the notes, this will be j. It's the columns first. So columns number times. X spacing and on the Y we're going to do the first Y position plus the column number that we're on which in this case the row number sorry which is I times the Y spacing close the bracket and then we're going to say sprite and we're going to set the color and you can do this to whatever you want but I am going to do it from RGB and we are going to set that one to 1 this is a value between 0 and 1, by the way, not 0 and 255. And the second value I'm going to set to 1 minus bracket i, which is the row number divided by 10, close the bracket, which is basically going to slightly change the middle value. Um, the middle, the green value is going to be slightly changing for each row, which will give us a kind of tapered look. And the last what we're going to do is sprite, sprite set even, sprite set, and we're going to add the sprite. Okay, back into main and let's call that, so I think we'll call it there. In fact, we'll do it from inside Reset Game. So, go into Reset Game, and after adding Vader's, we're going to add the shields. So, do code, add shields. 
and for that one we're going to put 100 we're going to set the y position based on the board height so we're going to say board height and we're going to minus it to move it up a little from the bottom um, so 180 that's the first shield so we're moving it 180 from the bottom we're going to set the shield width to 50 the shield height to 10 so it's quite narrow because we're going to over we're actually going to be overlapping them by giving this value here which be given the the space in the low value three rows we're doing nine columns Shield height, so that's we're doing three by nine and we're passing in not the aliens but the shields. Okay, so we need to pass in the shield. So we go to data and we look for shields, pass the shield sprite set in. Um the X spacing is going to be seventy five. And we're only going to space it at 5 on the Y space and that's because we want them actually to overlap. And let's run that now and see. And there we go, we've got shields. And if you notice there, they're overlapping and there's a slightly different shades there on them. Okay, and you can adjust this, you can make it more like the traditional spacing pages which had maybe 4 or 5 blocks, I'm doing it a little bit different. Um Okay, we need a we need a little method to clear the sprite sets properly right at the end of the game. So we're gonna add a new one and we're gonna call this clear sprite clear sprites. Okay. Um the reason we're doing this is it seems to be in touch develop. If you clear the sprite set it clears them from the sprite set but not necessarily from the game board. So if you die in the middle of a game, you might find that you've got sprites left in the board. So what we're going to say is for each, um, and for basically for each sprite in the shields, what we're going to do is say sprite, and we're going to delete. Okay, and we're going to do exactly the same thing for the other sprite set which is the aliens so delete all we're going to look around all the so basically in there we're going to look around all the sprites and shields all the sprites and aliens and we're going to delete them all and that gets them off the board um, and let's put that into reset game so before we add invaders and add shield let's make sure they're all deleted if there's none there, they, they won't be deleted because they're not there, so it'll not crash or anything. So clear the sprites, add the invader, add shields, and that stops any problems. So if we run that again, there we go, we're all good. Alright, basically what we need now is to get these aliens to shoot at you and you to shoot at them. So let's add something for that. If we go into art, and add something for that. Let's do alien rocket and look for a rocket. Now, as in most of my games, feel free to change the art and use whatever you want. I'm going to use that small rocket there for the aliens and I'm going to add a rocket for you to shoot at them. We'll use that one there. So we've got an alien rocket and we've got another rocket which we can shoot. You better to crop these in a bit more than that to be honest. Collision detection will happen around all of that so might have been better to choose a different one to be honest but it's just I'll leave that with you. Um, and the way we're going to do it now you could have a sprite set of these if you want multiple bullets to be fired at once. I'm just going to do it a simple way and just have one of each. But it may well be an idea to have a sprite set for these. 
Um, oh, one other graphic I need, sorry, we're going to have one button on the screen, so we're going to have a shoot button, so let's call that shoot button, and we'll search for a fire, there we go, it's either of those buttons, whatever one you like better, there's a bunch that I've done. So back to the main action. And we're going to declare some variables for these, so I'm going to say there alien rocket. I'm going to say board create picture and art and alien rocket, and then promote that to data. And they're going to say var player rocket board create picture and that is going to be the rocket and again promote it to data for shoot button and you guessed it board create picture art shoot button make it global, add another line, we're going to set the position of the ship button because it never moves, so ship button, set position, and we're going to say board with minus 120, minus the actual shoot button worth divided by two. Now we're, I'm probably overcomplicating a bit there, you could probably just fiddle with numbers rather than doing all that. Um, and on this one I'm going to say the board, yeah, I'm starting to think I should have just given it coordinates here. Eh? <coughs> I'm going to go with the board height, minus the shoot button Height divided by two. Right, so put it at the bottom basically. I mean, the, the advantage of doing it that way though is if you change the picture, it, it automatically adjusts based on the height, the size of the picture, which is an advantage. Um, we need some other variables here. What we need is um, some variables for the scoreboard basically. So we're going to say var lives. Board. This is going to be for your text basically, and we're going to say board create text. I'm going to put the font size down a little from 40 to 30. I'm going to keep the width and the height as 10 and 20. And then we're going to do the same thing, var scoreboard and board create text again, if I can find it that is. And we'll set the font size to 30 again, so the 40. And let's make these global. Promote to data. Promote to data. Right. We're also going to set the position of these. So, lies board. Set position. And this one I'm just going to give a number to. You're probably glad of that. 740 on the X. And this one I'm going to do board height minus 35. which is bringing it up 35 from the bottom and we're going to say scoreboard set position 80 so the scoreboard is going to be on the left and again board height 
minus 35. So they're in line from the bottom and they're set up to those two positions. Um, we're going to go into reset game and we're going to tell it to hide the rockets initially. I'm basically going to use whether the rockets are visible or are hidden as whether they've been shot or not. So what I'm going to say in here is alien rocket and we're going to hide it. And play a rocket and we're going to hide that one as well. Right, so we're hiding those two. Um, again, run that again just to make sure we're all good. Okay, so you see the fire button is there now. So you can basically tilt the screen if you're using touch device and just tap that button to shoot. Um, if we go into the game loop, I'm going to do this at the top and then what I'm going to say is scoreboard set text and I'm going to put in a string of my own which is going to be score with a space and I'm going to concatenate onto that the actual score value right. and then I'm going to do a very similar thing with the live board set text and we're going to make it lives with a space and we're going to concatenate onto that the life's variable. And let's run that now and see what happens. Right, so see there we've got score over here and lives over there. So we've got the, those drawn on the screen. As they update, those two lines that I've just put there will repeat and will update the score and lives when they change. Okay, now we're going to allow you to shoot. So we're going to add an action for that. And just to be original, we're going to call it shoot. We're going to add in three input parameters. The first one is going to be the velocity of your bullet. Right. Uh, we're going to add in where it's shooting from. This is just a position, but I'm saying that because we're generally going to shoot it from a sp sprite. So what I'm going to actually pass in is the sprite. Um, and then we're going to shoot it from where that sprite is at. And the other thing we're going to pass in, which is a sprite as well, um, is the actual graphic to shoot. Okay, so we're passing in a few things here. And um, when you do it with sprites, it does point to the sprite, so it will reference the real sprite in the game board. And we're just going to say sprite to shoot. Set the position, and we're going to set it to right, just rename. I thought I had renamed that. We're going to call that sprite shooting from. Right, so we're going to say sprite shooting from X for the X position and sprite shooting from y for the y position so we're just setting, setting the sprite that we're shooting to be exactly where the existing one is i suggest you draw it underneath it as well so it looks like it's coming from from it and not from on top of it so it will come it from underneath it you won't see it as easily the fact that it's coming from the middle of it and sprite to shoot set the speed On the Y, that is. If I can find it. Set, go past it there. Set speed Y. And yeah, we're just going to shoot, shoot V. Uh, we're just going to shoot the rockets in this game vertically either up the way or down the way so always be a 
a value on the y and we're going to set that to the y value that we're passing in and then lastly to, we're going to show the sprite and that's not only going to show the sprite on the screen so we can see the bullet but it's going to be how I'm going to indicate whether it's been shot or not so that very, that wee method there will basically be used to shoot the bullets from or the rockets sorry from both teams both the aliens and the base okay now we're going to do some stuff in the game loop now um, one of the things we're going to do is basically to tell it to um, allow you to shoot but we only want to do it when the game's running so I'm going to add an if in here at the top and I'm going to say if data lies is greater than zero and then and then and only then we're going to check for the shooting okay and we're going to then say if now before we do this we actually need to add in some game libraries so I'm going to go back and do that I forgot to do that so scroll down here to libraries and yeah the one you want is that game events when it, it, you should find it by searching for game Right, so game events. Which I've added twice now. Right, so game events we want in. The other library that we want to add is the sprite sheet one. Right. So there seems to be a slightly newer one there, so let's add that one. Hoping that still works that one. Right, so add those libraries in and we'll go back to game loop now. So what we're gonna say is if game events, this is a wee function I wrote that lets you um check for somebody touching the screen but holding the button down on the screen. And um, the default touch events and touch develop only let you check for touching and letting go. So touch hold, which means you've touched it, and we're gonna pass in the game board. So we can check that board to see if it touches and we're going to check the shoot button to see if you touch that. Okay, so that basically checks if you're touching and hold it or holding down the shoot button. And then we're going to say if not player touched, player rocket, sorry, is visible. Right, so that's basically saying if if the player rocket is on not on the board currently, so it's not already been shot, it's not currently moving, then we're going to call the shoot one that we just created. We're going to give it a speed of minus 300, so it's going to rapidly fire up the way. Um, we're going to shoot it from the base, and what we're going to shoot is going to be the uh, rocket, the player rocket. Okay, let's try that now. There we go, now it's too big isn't it, but you yeah, we can fix that. Okay, so that's shot. Some other things we've got to change in here is... We really only need this stuff to run now. The moving the base and all this stuff, we only really need that to run um, when lies is greater than zero so when the game's running so I'm going to highlight these lines here as well I'm going to cut them and we're going to put them in here careful where you line up you don't want it to be inside this if we need it inside this if so if the life is, is greater than zero this would be a good place for a comment saying check if game is running All right and that's based on the lights we're, we're checking if the game is running okay um, the other thing that we need to do is check if the rocket leaves the screen so I'm going to say in here if the player rocket so we're going to look for player rocket on the y axis minus the player rocket height And then what we're going to say is play a rocket hide 
Um, and we forgot to say the condition which was not minus it should have been less than so if player rocket y is less than minus that's where the minus goes less than negative player rocket height basically we're checking for not zero which is the top but the actual height of the rocket out the top of the screen to make sure it's right out and basically we're just saying if it goes out the screen um, put it back so that we get this effect so we can shoot the rocket and we can shoot it again and again I can hold that down even and keep shooting as you can see and as you also see we need to make that smaller so let's go back and fix that if we go back to main and look for where it says player rocket and add a new line in there we can say data player rocket set width and we'll set it to say 20 and run that again right and so 20 we've now gotten the wrong way I mean we've gone far too small so let's see 50 and there we go that's a bit more reasonable isn't it yeah I quite like that yeah I'm happy with that we need to add some um, methods now for various events that occur during the game so I'm going to go ahead and do that and um, if we go to add new action one event we're going to have is when the base is hit okay and the things that we're going to do when the base hit are very simple we're going to set the global life variable to equal the global life variable minus one so we're going to subtract one from the from the lives we're also going to say alien rocket we're going to hide it so that it can be reshot we're just using one rocket for the aliens and one for you as I said you could use a sprite set to make it more interesting there's a challenge for you we're also going to action for another event that will occur which will be when the shields are hit okay and when the shields are hit what we want to do is we want to hide the rocket and we want to remove the shield now we need to know what shield it is so we're going to pass that in so we are going to pass in a sprite and what we're going to see is alien rocket hide and we're also going to see shields remove that sprite from it so we're going to hide the rocket we're going to remove the shield from the sprite sh set of shields and lastly we're going to actually make sure that the sprite is deleted off the board so we're going to say sprite and we're looking for delete Oh, there it was. Delete. Okay. Okay. And we're going to add one more action, which is going to be to kill an alien. So an alien's been shot. We want to destroy it. And again, we need to pass in the alien that we're destroying. So let's pass in the sprite again. We're going to pass in a sprite. Um, you can, by the way, actually rename this by entering the local variable there and then hitting rename. So we can do that and we can call it alien sprite if we want so that we know what it is. There we go. And then what we can see in this is now player rocket hide so I hide the player rocket because you've hit the ship and it can be reshot then and the alien sprite set we want to do a similar thing that we did a minute ago and we want to remove the alien sprite from it and then we also want to delete the alien sprite from the game board and lastly and not least 
score equals score plus whatever you want. I'm going to say five. So we hide the alien rocket because it's hit the alien. We remove the alien sprite from the sprite set and we delete the alien sprite from the game board and then we add five on. That's those actions done. Now to put them into practice. So one more action here which is probably going to be the biggest one and this is check. We're going to check for all the collisions in here. Um, so this is a fairly long method I'm going to do here um, but it's necessary. So we say if first thing we're going to check is if the alien rocket overlaps which is how you check for collisions overlaps with not the scoreboard but in fact with the base which is your ship. Um, so if it alien rocket overlaps with your base and the alien rocket is visible which is important to say otherwise you can lose a whole bunch of lives it's when it hits you you'll continue to lose lives even if we set it invisible and then we're going to say run the code for base hit that we already created okay that's quite important we want to check if the alien rocket hits you that we run the base hit next check we want to do is if the alien rocket on the Y plus the alien rocket height divided by 2 to give us the bottom of the rocket. If the bottom of the rocket is greater than the board height Okay, pretty sure that should actually be a minus there, minus to bring it to the top of it. So the top of the alien rocket is greater than the board height. Then we want to say alien rocket hide. And at that point it can be reshot. Um, another collision we want to check for is collisions between the alien rockets and the shields. So for each. And we're going to look through the shields. and what we're going to say is if the alien rocket is visible and the alien rocket overlaps with the the sprite. Okay, so if, it, if it's visible and it overlaps with the sprite, which is the shield sprite, then what we want to do is we want to call our shield hit. This a code shield hit. And it is indeed passing. The sprite is the correct one to pass in. Okay, move to the left make sure you hit that twice so we're right in and then do another four each this time we're going around the aliens and we're going to check this one is actually to check when to shoot we haven't actually told the aliens to shoot yeah okay so this is probably the most tricky bit for the aliens we're going to say if not Sorry, it's my front door again. If not, the alien rocket is visible. So, first of all, we're checking if the alien rocket is not visible, so it's ready to be shot, and, and this is the tricky bit, sprite 2, make sure I get this right, X minus sprite 2, which is, remember, sprite 2 is aliens, um, width. Divided by 2 
is less than the base position, the position of your base in the X, which basically means that the left hand side of your alien is less than to, to the left of the position of the base. But we're going to say and sprite to x plus sprite to width divided by 2 is also greater than the base x which means the right hand side of the alien ship is to the right of the base which basically means if the left hand side of the alien ship and the right hand side of the alien ship are to the left and and the right of your ship that means it's above you because the x position of your ship is the middle of the ship so if it's hovering above you basically time to shoot so call shoot and we are going to pass in a velocity of 300 it's going to be fast um, the sprite we are shooting from is indeed sprite 2 and the sprite we are going to shoot is the alien rocket. Now we need to make sure, sure that we call check for collisions to check for collisions and to allow the aliens to shoot so find your game loop, we want to call it in the game loop so it's checking for all the time. Find game loop and click on that and we'll add it in there um, and add that in. So we'll add it in say there for instance and we'll say code check for collisions and let's run that now and there we go we have shooting and it is hitting you and the lights are counting down okay the game isn't ending yet though because we haven't added that in but that was success right there's a bit more to do in check collisions right so let's go back in there so we're going to do that only one hit move left but only once here and we're going to do another if in inside this for each and this time we're saying if the player rocket this is why we're still looping around the aliens. If the player rocket is visible and the player rocket hits you know what basically overlaps with Sprite 2 which is the alien and if that happens we kill the alien. Right. And we pass in Sprite 2 which is the current alien. So if we run that now and shoot back, there we go, aliens are dying. And one more bit to do here, move left, move left. So this is outside the four each. And the last one we're going to do here is say, if the alien count get to zero. Now, so we're looking for aliens and there's a counter. Because we're removing sprites from the set, it actually removes the number of sprites in the set and we can then check how many is left so once it becomes zero we basically know that you've destroyed all the aliens and we can spawn a new wave so we can then say when that happens we can add invaders in fact yeah so it's going to be 50 by same as before really you can probably cut and paste this in 4 by 10 5 and 5 for the space in and the speed is 50. Now this is where we will speed them up. So we'll say 50 plus wave number times 10. So that means if it's in wave 1 it will be plus 10, wave 2, 20 etc. So we're adding um, speed on each wave. Okay and it's not the shields that we're spawning here, it is aliens, the alien sprite, the alien sprite set and the picture that we're using is the alien picture. But again you could do Fs in here and you could use different aliens for different um, waves and the size we want is 40. Again you could even make them bigger here if you want to but it's just in this value based on the wave number. All I'm going to do is speed things up. Also remember though when you're doing this to say uh, wave equals wave plus one right so we can increase the wave counter you should find that in reset game wave counter is back to one anyway which it is 
Okay, so back into check for collisions, and that's that big method done. I wasn't. Now, there's a bug in this, as you can see. See how the ship is moving when I hit the fire button? That shouldn't be happening. Okay, the reason why the, the thing is moving when you hit the ship button is I made a mistake back here in game loop. So the, this section of code here that basically shoots, we need to cut that bit out. Yeah, but let's cut let's cut that whole bit out and that bit there and cut that whole bit out and put that into move base. Right, there's a good reason for this. So we'll put that at the top of move base. Okay, but we want to take this second part here if possible. Cut that bit. Right, so we want to leave the tilt controls outside of there just where it is, that's fine. Tilt is fine there. This bit should go into the else. Right, so we'll put it here. So basically if you're if you're touching the shoot button and you're using on skin controls you can shoot but you can't move by pasting that in there. Okay, and that's the way that move base should look. Yep. That's it. Right, try that now. So we're not gonna use the accelerometer. And if you shoot it doesn't move, if you touch the screen it does, that's what we want. Okay, that's better. All programmers make mistakes. Deal with it. Just see if I'm good enough to clear a wave here. No, I am not. Trust me, the wave thing works. You could always put the lights up to check that. Okay, we're almost there. All we really need now is to end the game. Right, so let's add an action now to end the game. So, end game is what we're going to call this action, just for originality. We're going to say wall clear. So we can clear the wall when the game ends and we're going to use the bizarre um, high score table. So we're going to say bizarre post leaderboard score and the score we're going to post is going to be our global score variable. We're also going to display the leaderboard so we're going to say bizarre um, post leaderboard to wall. I'm also going to stick up a little message saying game over and post that to the vault. Um, we're going to sleep it for, we're going to use the time and the sleep function to sleep for five seconds to allow them to look at the high score table for five seconds. And then once that five, five seconds is up, we're going to say if wall ask boolean, ask a question basically. And the question we're going to ask is going to be hit, hit the string button and say play again question mark so we're going to ask them whether they want to play again if that comes back true it will go into this part of the the if statement and we're going to call our reset game now you see why we made a reset game method at the start action sorry and then we can say else and if they choose not to keep playing we can say time and stop and the handy bit about that is when you stop it, it will freeze on the high score table so you can have a look at the high score table in more detail at that point. Um, and the final thing we need to do just is go back to game loop and it says here if life is greater than zero, move the base, check for limits, move the aliens, check for collisions and finally if it's not greater than zero the game is ended, we're going to say code end the game. Okay, And then in end game it calls reset game if you choose to play again and that will set the lights back to zero which will get it out of this and back into this part and that should be the game complete we can move we can shoot they shoot at me right Game's over. Waits five seconds with the high score table. High score high score table really only shows up right once you publish. Play again. Yes. Tilt con controls. No. And there we go. Lights are back. Scores back to zero. We can play again. And we have space invaders. And that is the end of the tutorial. However, the first challenge is to add explosions. I'm going to do one for you just to show you that. Um. So. Let's do that. Um, 
we're going to, we did this in the last exercise though, so you should know how to do it. But I'm going to go to the bottom of main, and I'm going to use the sprite set library, and I'm going to initialize the board for a sprite set. Um, I'm going to set a sheet using the sprite set, and the sheet that I'm going to set, I'm going to call good explosion. So you enter that as a string. The picture that we're going to use now, I need to get add a picture, so let's do that. Go to art. And search online art for explosion. Uh, what will we use? Let's do that small fire explosion. It's one, two, three, four by four by four, I think that one is. Yeah, one or five by four. Yeah, we'll use that one. That one's nice enough, isn't it? I'm happy with that one if you are. Right, we'll go back into main and we're gonna tell it we're gonna use that one. Which is art and explosion one. It's asking for the number of rows, which was four and the number of columns which was five if I remember right uh, four rows five columns that's correct okay and that's added that and now we just need to tell it to play we need to tell it in the game loop to update the, the s any animations so we're going to say game events Sorry, not game events. Um, sprite sheet evolve, which basically updates the sprite sheet, um, and now let's make it play that. So if we let's see where we want to do that. We want to do that and check for collisions, don't we? Because that's when it happens. So let's see if the Player rocket is visible and the player rocket overlaps the sprite, kill the alien. In fact, let's just do it and kill alien. Right, so we'll do it in here. We're going to say in here. In fact, we'll do it before we we'll do it at the top. So what we're going to say is make a new sprite. Let's call it explosion sprite. And that is going to equal the sprite sheet library. We're going to create a full animation using the whole sprite sheet and the animation is called I think I called it Good Explosion I might want to put shorter names for the descriptions of them and duration, well let's play it for one second which is long enough and the last parameter is the number of loops says down here, that's what I'm looking for that by the way, we're going to play it once and that's it and we want to set the position of it so explosion sprite set position and the position we want to set is the position of where this happened, so the player rocket x so we're setting the what X position of this new sprite to the same position as the player rocket and the Y to the same as well right and that's it and let's have some explosions there we go how pretty is that I know you're liking that as much as me and that is the end of the tutorial how to make my touch invaders game enjoy Try out some of the challenges like adding sound effects, perhaps add an alien mothership, perhaps change the aliens after each wave. There's lots of things you can do. Enjoy. Thank you.